My first tip in buying chandeliers is to look at your room. If it's a drawing room, you need to know the measurement, the height of the room. Uh, height is the most important thing of all, of course, because of head clearance. There's no rule of thumb in buying chandeliers as to clearance, but I would recommend that, obviously, if you can raise your arm above your head and you don't hit the chandelier, that would be good news for the chandelier's future. For a dining room, you definitely should hang your chandelier lower, and this gives better aesthetic light. A dimmer switch always helps, when it, whether it's a bedroom, a drawing room, a dining room, because it does give you the feeling of candlelight. Also, the type of fitting that you might put on the chandelier is very important. Um, first of all, with regards to a chandelier at a low height, this is what I call the sort of dining room height. But think of yourself seated at a table, and if it had been candlelit, then you would expect the candles to light the table, so therefore you'd expect the light to be hung at a lower level. The drawing room, for instance, um, as you see here, is well above my head, but it's not really high enough. You need to be able to stretch your hand up, whether a short person or a tall person. Perhaps if you're six foot six, then you don't have to put your hands quite as high, but it does protect the chandelier in the long run if it is, is got a little more height. Also, a, a drawing room chandelier perhaps could be a little squarer. This is difficult with antique chandeliers to find because most chandeliers are what we know as pendants. They tend to be more of a triangular form, smaller at the top, wider at the bottom, whether candles would be normally. This also kept the candles away from the ceiling and stopped the ceiling from getting smutted. So that's historically why the chandelier tends to have that Christmas tree shape. You might also consider putting a chandelier in the bathroom. This is shock horror to any electrician, but to any decorator it's becoming the vogue even to hang one over the bath if you've got a central bath. Whatever happens, make sure that you're signed off and the electrician is happy. I'm not a trained electrician, but in my experience of doing this sort of work, one thing is always installed is a transformer to bring the current, currency of the chandelier power down so that it becomes a lot safe, safer. There is a system called an OSH light, which is a sealed light bulb, quite a small, almost like a car headlamp bulb um, that then has a sealed cover that screws over, it can be frosted or clear. It's worth talking to a qualified technician about this, but do remember life is a danger. So while we love aesthetics, bathrooms are very tricky places for electricity. But as I say, at the moment there is this movement to use this form called Yosh, Yosh light, and it is sealed and should be cleared and signed off the job um, when installing. A third tip to consider is about how the chandelier is going to be suspended. It's something that people don't think about until they get the chandelier home. So perhaps on this one we might start really with saying get a builder to test the hook, should there be a hook, which very often there isn't. Um, normally to install some sort of safe fixing in the ceiling, it would involve taking the floorboard above. Again, there are problems, complications, such as a tile bathroom floor above, which would be a big complication, which means the builder would have to cut out the ceiling rows below or put a ceiling rows in. When they put in some sort of fixing, the technical term would be obviously a joist, but there's also a term called a bresima. This is a small beam that's put in between the joists. Often in houses that were built in around, say, the 1860s onwards, they had gas. The gas chandeliers or gasoliers weren't actually suspended from a hook. They were actually suspended from a, a metal tube and that's where the gas passed through. So the gasolier was screwed to the metal tube so it didn't actually have to be hung from a beam. So that is why so often, particularly in terraced houses, you don't actually have a beam where you'd like one to be. So there's a tip, don't assume that you have a beam in the centre of your room. A fourth tip you might consider is how would you like your lighting to be? Do you want a strong light in the room or do you want aesthetic light? Usually it's aesthetic because you are hanging an art form, you're hanging a statement. There's something that you don't want a bulb really to be prevalent. You're looking at the crystals, the glass of the chandelier and obviously its frame. Um, we tend to recommend that you use the E10 French candle bulb, made in Paris, you can buy them on the internet, or well, there are various retailers around the country and abroad. America, obviously a different wattage, the fitting is the same, but the bulb is different for the States. The actual fitting is supplied with the cable coming from inside it, so it's not detachable. 
therefore your actual sleeve has to be cut by an expert, reduced at the bottom, still with the lead inside, um, to according to the height of the chandelier. Again, you can engage it yourself and discuss that with somebody who's capable of doing that work, but ideally use somebody who understands about this particular E10 French candle bulb and its fitting. The alternative, if you're doing bathroom work, is to use the OSH, O-S-H, fitting, which is like this. It's again a bit complicated, needs to be properly tapped and fitted. Um, here we have an example above, um, which is the watertight, although it's on heaven forbid, an iron frame for a bathroom, but because also you might use a dimmer system with a reducer, um, therefore that makes it legal as long as your electrician will sign it off, listen to him, because this is a matter of life and death. So nowadays people do put chandeliers in bathrooms, you do often have central baths, they do hang the chandelier aesthetically over the bath, something we've never done before, but nowadays, under the right supervision, it can be done. But using, as far as I know, the only one that I know of is the OSH wash light. Um, a transformer is usually used with that, which takes the power of the lighting down a bit, but it does make it safe for yourself, let's say, under a supervision of a, a signed expert who would then have to sign the job off.